Good morning and welcome, welcome spring. Have you ever been more excited to see a new season arrive on our doorsteps? Between spring and this week's gift of more light and the continuing success with the fight against COVID, hope really is all around us. I am so glad you have joined in for this North Chapel virtual Sunday service on this day, March 21st. Your presence makes our circle stronger. I am Mary Jean Taylor and as ever, I am honored to take part today. I am speaking to you from my back porch in Bethel, though my heart surely lies with all of you, wherever this day and time may find you, as we come together in community. Of special note, our spring fling auction that you've heard us talking about is live for 10 more days. Go to our website at www.northchapelvt.org to see all the incredible items available for your bid. When I think about the auction, it makes me feel closer to so many of you from church who I haven't seen for ages, donating your talents in the way of bread and other tasty delights, beautiful works of art, professional services, sweet treats like cookies and brownies, muscle power, and more, all to support our North Chapel. Both your loving gifts and your generous bids warm my heart. Thank you for these and your continuing support of our most special spiritual home. With gratitude, we welcome Gareth Henderson, today's guest reflector, who is a journalist with deep and caring roots in Woodstock, Vermont. He has worked as a journalist for 20 years and is the founder of the online Omni Reporter. In his March 4th Omni editorial, Embracing Good Without the Limits, he writes, this age is demanding more of us. It's asking us to receive others into a place of compassion in a way that points us toward innovative solutions. With that work before us, let's not start from a place of limitation. Instead, we can humbly join together and start from a clean slate of possibilities, working outward from the good we share and embracing its promise of peace. As we consider this month's theme of possibilities, Gareth has more to share about it in his reflection. Do stay tuned. Often during this long, though now finally ending winter, when the day of the week was lost to us, we would say, it's Blur's Day. Well, the blurry days are fading. The light and warmth returning and possibility lies at our feet. I do hope you feel this to be true in your own life. And as you come here to this bit of peace, I offer you these lines of blessing from Western Ireland's beloved poet, John O'Donohue, to take into your week. May this house shelter your life when you come in home here, may all the weight of the world fall from your shoulders. May your heart be tranquil here, blessed by peace the world cannot give. May this be a safe place, full of understanding and acceptance, where you can be as you are, without the need of any mask of pretense or image. May you have the eyes to see that no visitor arrives without a gift and no guest leaves without a blessing. Welcome in with so many wishes of all the blessings of spring. Let's bring our voices to this day, shall we? Tis a gift to be simple is our opening hymn.
My name is Laura Foley and I'm speaking to you from a hilltop in South Pomfret, Vermont. Last week I was reflecting on the sadness of having a friend die, leave us. Today I wanted to read a poem about new life. In our own family, my daughter-in-law had a baby on March 13th in the evening and uh, we were lucky enough they're part of our pod, so we have been together quite a bit. And it's this beautiful child. And the question is, how do these things happen? How does spring happen? Where does it come from? How does the world know? How does the earth know to arise? So I wanted to read this poem called My Hand on Her Belly. I can feel him turning, rolling over, and now he has the hiccups. And is this the head or the back? Even she can't tell. One day soon, we'll get a call. It might be any time. It might be right now or at 3 a.m. tomorrow. Any day, really, she's that due. It's like when you're at a crowded restaurant and they give you a buzzer. Don't go too far, they say. We'll buzz you when a table is ready. And you walk around the parking lot with your little children who arrived somehow one day, out of you, you hardly know how. You just walk around until suddenly the buzzer goes off and you file inside the restaurant, you and your whole miraculous, hungry family. Curiosity. That's something we're born with, something we grow up with. As a child, I'd wake up early in the morning to join my dad for his breakfast routine. On top of the fridge was a little red radio. 
offering up the news of the day with that classic NPR music. We'd have our conversations, of course, but there was always that time where we would just sit and listen to the news together. My dad was getting ready for another day in the newsroom. I wasn't. But we were both curious. That was a pathway to understanding the world more fully. Curiosity leads us straight to the question, what's right here in front of us, and what does it mean? The answer is all about possibilities, present possibilities, not ones that are far off or perhaps unreachable, but present ones. Frankly, as you look at the past year, and so many others, we have practical examples of how good we can be to one another. We've lifted each other up in life-changing ways with powerful examples of kindness and compassion. You might say those qualities arrived to protect us from fear and from lingering doubts about one another. That's really the lasting promise of goodness. If you help someone or work with them constructively, you'll see each other differently. That inherent goodness revealed through the kindness and nurturing we all need serves to unite us. So you might call it a natural layer of protection that we have, which helps dissolve and resolve adversity. The virtues that can lead us to that point are here, deep within us, right now. They're present, they're possible, and they come to light when we most need them. The light always shines through the darkness and illuminates the shadowy landscape. It glimmers on the high points until it gives way to the fully lit picture. Much like a watercolor artist works with their paints, the secret is not putting too much paint on, but rather letting the light shine through the picture. Forcing that effect, on the other hand, will often lead to the opposite of what we want. It can muddy the picture we're trying to create. If we let the already existing good shine through our minds and into our lives, that can lead to actual tangible possibilities we can embrace, especially in situations when impossibility seems like the rule. But we know so much looks impossible. I remember how everything looked mid-March last year. The bleakness, the fear, feeling trapped, lost, I think part of that is we needed each other so much and so immediately, and yet in so many ways we couldn't connect. But gradually we did. The world was learning about its collective heart and how to use it. We discovered how connected we really are. And that transcended the limits and labels we've so often put on one another. We got a glimpse of the fact that we aren't separate. We are one, and we need that one. We need it manifested in our lives. Now the question is, how do we use what we've learned about that collective heart? We get curious. We question the long-standing limits and welcome possible solutions to resolving and overcoming them. One example, one limit I've often heard of in the past year is that we could never possibly be unified well, when it comes to ready support and ceaseless efforts to help each other, we've proven that's already who we are. That's what keeps our heart beating as a community, a state, a nation, and even a global community. And not just for a season, not just for a crisis. The strength and permanence of that good, of those possibilities, has only to be harnessed. As the poet Rumi said, there is a candle in your heart, ready to be kindled. There's a void in your soul, ready to be filled. You feel it, don't you? So perhaps we have to take that which seemed impossible, turn it around in our thinking, before we see possibility manifested. Present possibilities start out in thought, and we must work to bring them out into the light and establish them in our experience for the good of everyone. 
This past year, I like to say, was a grand reset with fruit of ever-present healing possibilities at its core. Now it's time to reach out, pick that fruit, and make something from it. In place of old thinking that would label ourselves and others and reject potential, make new thinking. Make every moment a fruitful one that embraces and welcomes the work needed to enact and realize these present possibilities in our lives. And let's do it not just for us, but for everyone. That outward focus, that gathering together of meekness, is strong enough to underpin and strengthen all the progress we need. That could be the most powerful possibility there is. Let's use all our moments to make it so. Makes me feel like spring inside. 